Welcome to this session, Copy and Modify. So in this session, we're going to copy this lobby core and create the office core. And then of course, modify the heights of the walls and the stairs. So I'll start by going to File, Save As, and we're going to create an A core office. Now this core will actually be used for both of the office floors because the geometry will be the same on both floors. So we're now in the A core office floor. I'm going to again change my floor selector to floor one. Of course, I can move the grid up and I need to move all my geometry up. So I'm just going to select everything and then right press in the view, select move. And I really just need to place a point anywhere, rotate my compass so I can move in the vertical direction. I'm going to lock that axis with the enter key and then type in the dimension. So our lobby floor is 15 feet or 4,500 millimeters. So that's the dimension I want to move it. And then a left click in the view will deselect everything. Now the next step would be to change the heights of the walls. So we don't need to change all the walls because the toilet rooms are still gonna have the 10 foot height. But the rest of the walls, which go to the underside of the slab, need to be reduced by a foot, right? Because the floor to floor height on the office floors is 14 feet or 4,200 millimeters. Now there's several ways we could do that. In, in the last course, we, we created selection sets of, of walls and, and modified them. We could also go up to our data reporting tab and select our schedules dialog, where we could then group and select walls. And so if I select that wall catalog, it shows all the walls in the model. And we could sort these in different ways. So for instance, I could sort by height. So then I have my 10 foot walls and then all the 14 foot eight. And it's the 14 foot eight ones that I want to change. So using you know control and shift, I can select multiple selections. So I'm just using the shift key to select all of the walls, which have a height of 14 foot eight. And then if I come in that height column, I can right click on one of those values and select edit values. And then I can just simply type in a new value, 13 foot eight or 4,100 millimeters and hit enter and it's going to change the height of all the walls. And we should see that there in the view. Now we'll, we'll see that now, of course, our stair also needs to be adjusted. And I could do the same thing, select my stair catalog type. And all I need to change here is the stair height of both stairs. So rather than 15 feet, again, right click and select edit values. And I'm going to put in 14 feet. And you should see your stair adjust in the view. So that's all the heights that need to be modified. The only other modification would be our door swings. And so the two stair doors were swinging out on these floors, they should swing in. So if I select the stair, you'll note there's handles on there. I could adjust dimensions as well, but this handle right here will flip and allows me to now move my door swing to the direction I want. I'll do the same here. So you just select that handle and then move your cursor until you get the position that you want and then a left click to accept. And finally, one other change we might want to do is now that we have actually changed the stair height, perhaps we want to redistribute the treads. So I'm going to select both my stairs by just selecting, holding my control key, selecting the other stair. So I have both stairs selected. I'm then going to right press in the view and you'll note there is an option which is called uh, dis display set set. 
basically isolates the elements that are selected. So we're going to set the display set. And you can see everything else gets turned off so that all I see is my stairs. That will make it easier to work on that geometry without having the surrounding walls. I'll left click to deselect and then I'm going to just select one stair. And stairs also have a number of handles on them. Um, for instance, we could add or subtract a tread at the landing if we need to make that adjustment for our handrails. We could change the stair direction. So if I select this handle here, it flips the stair so it runs in the other direction. And then we can change the tread di distribution, which basically means we're moving the landing up or down. And if I view my in my top view, you'll see I can see the numbers. And so I like to just rotate my AccuDraw compass so that it's I'm moving in the vertical direction. So I'm moving that that landing basically up and down. And if I look in my top view, I can see how those are numbering. So I now have 23 risers on this stair due to the reduced height. And so I'm going to redistribute so I have 11 and 12. So once I have it distributed the way I want, again, just a left click to make the adjustment. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. We're basically pulling it down one riser distance. So we've made those stair adjustments. Now I want to turn everything back on. So I just right press in the view again, and there is an option display set to clear. And now we have all the walls back on. So now we have two core models created, one for the lobby floor and one that we're actually going to use for both office floors. There's no need to model things twice if it's basically replicated. So our, the core is typical on several floors and we'll just reuse it on each floor. So in the next session, we'll go ahead and get these cores attached to our, our floors. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.